It's pretty safe to say nobody really likes hospitals. The cold, sterile environment, getting poked and prodded by total strangers, and the ever-lingering presence of death all serve to make hospitals creepy and uncomfortable to be around. It also makes some perfect material for shameless horror movies to capitalize on. So today I'm going to be looking at two early 80s slasher films that cashed in on the unique sense of queasiness that only a hospital can bring. First up is Hospital Massacre, aka X-Ray, released in 1981 by Canon Films. It's Valentine's Day and this creepy kid named Harold wants to win the heart of his crush, Susan, but she's more interested in the hunky David. Naturally, Harold is pissed and kills David by hanging him from a hat rack. Nineteen years later, Susan has grown up to be Playboy cover girl Barbie Benton. Her hair colour isn't even the same as the little girl actress. Anyway, Susan is off to the hospital for a routine checkup, which is really just an excuse to peep her Faye Reagan nipples. Might as well get what they paid her for. But oh no, there's a killer loose in the hospital, and he's got his eyes set firmly on Susan. Yes, it appears little Harold is back masquerading as one of the hospital's many doctors. He kills Susan's actual doctor and replaces her medical notes, resulting in her being admitted and having to stay overnight. The janitor finds the doctor's body and gets his face burned off with acid. Just about every doctor, nurse and patient in this hospital is a creepy weirdo. I guess to make you think that they might be the killer. Except for this one nice and friendly intern who actually tries to help Susan out. I'm Harry. Susan Jeremy. Gee, I wonder who the killer is. Most of these other bozos just wind up acting as cannon fodder for Harold's rampage. <laughs> Gotta love the music that plays every time there's a murder. So eventually Susan is abducted and unmasks the killer to be, would you believe it, Harry. Harry. It's not Harry. It's Harold. The final chase is quite good, taking place in a disused ward that's been shut down due to a vermin infestation. Susan of course wins in the end by setting Harold on fire and throwing him off the roof. This movie is surprisingly a pretty solid slasher film, much better than I was expecting. The killing and chase sequences were well shot and well paced, and there's also a rich vein of dark humour running through the whole thing, which made me laugh out loud several times. The following year we got the Canadian offering Visiting Hours. This one's got Michael Ironside in it, Oh hell yeah. Yeah, I'd like that. He plays Colt Hawker, sounds badass, a psychopathic, woman-hating serial killer. Hey, this guy's like me. When he sees outspoken feminist Deborah Bolland on TV talking about some bollocks, he breaks into her house to try and kill her. She barely escapes with her life and is taken to the local hospital. Deborah's played by Lee Grant, and her boyfriend's played by William Shatner. Hmm, that's two Columbo killers in one movie. Anyway, Hawker tries repeatedly to sneak into the hospital to finish what he started, but is constantly thwarted by minor shit like a door being locked or a passing security guard. So he usually takes his anger out on random patients and staff. Deborah, be Deborah, be Deborah befriends a nurse, Sheila, played by Linda Pearl, who's quite likable, but the real star of the show is Ironside, as intimidating as he's ever been. Hawker turns his attention from Deborah to Sheila, terrorizing her at home, which means that half of this movie doesn't even take place in a hospital. Eventually he stabs her, then intentionally injures himself by smashing his arm into a glass bottle, so both he and Sheila are taken to the hospital at the same time. Once inside, Hawker makes one final attempt on Deborah's life, but she puts up a pretty good fight as he chases her all over the hospital. In the end, she manages to get the drop on him by hiding behind a curtain and stabbing him with his own switchblade. Uh. 
I must say, I'm sorely disappointed she didn't stand triumphantly over his corpse and say, Visiting hours are over, followed by a smash cut to end credits. Yeah! Going into these movies, I fully expected Visiting Hours to be the better of the two. I mean, it's got the more sophisticated cast, but to be honest, Hospital Massacre was way more entertaining. Visiting Hours is more of a thriller than a horror movie. One that seems to be trying to say something about misogyny and the use of violence, but I just don't think it quite works. I will say though, while researching this film, I found old posts on the IMDB message board by the screenwriter Brian Taggart, explaining what he set out to do and hoped to achieve with the script and why an actress of Lee Grant's prestige and caliber signed on to do it. They're an interesting enough read. Sight to Cinema I explained the genesis of this picture and why it enjoyed success. The question was asked why Lee Grant, a grand actress, was in this film. I guess you are too dim to comprehend or too dull-witted to see what was going on between the lines. Lee and I had a vision how to make it work, and we were right. Best you concentrate on slasher films that throw guts at the screen, as that seems to be the depth of your understanding and intelligence. <laughs>